In this video, we're going to be installing a B2B Fab lift kit on a 2019 Volkswagen Tiguan. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we won't be working on the wagon but instead a 2019 Tiguan. And the neat thing about this is both of these cars chassis are very similar and part of the same family. So much of what I've learned from working on the Golf should apply to this car as well. The car is not mine but it belongs to a friend and fan of the channel that lives right here in Michigan so I offered to help him out in exchange for letting me film the process and sharing it all with you and it belongs to this guy right here. Hey, my partner here, you wanna see that Prada? When he talking. My name is Jeff. It's Jefe, man. His name is Jeff, and you'll hear more from him at the end of this video, and you'll see him throughout it as well. So what we're gonna be working on today is installing a camber correcting lift kit that comes from b to b Fab, a company many of you are probably familiar with, but not one that I've personally bought any product from previously. So I'm excited to get into this one. By installing this kit, we should be adding approximately 1.5 inches of ground clearance to Jeff's Tiguan. And what makes this kit somewhat unique is that it's camber correcting. And what that means for all of you is that typically when lifting a car, the front camber will shift slightly in the positive direction. And when I say positive, I don't mean as in good, but positive as in integers or the scale that camber is measured on. This theoretically would result in a car that has less responsive cornering. This kit is designed to add negative camber in the same amount that it would be lost due to the lift. Therefore, keeping the camber measurement about the same and keeping the driving experience also about the same. Now, before we get into the install, let's take a few measurements on the Tiguan to see where it's at before it's lifted. For our measurements, we went from the bottom lip of the wheel to the inside of the fender. This made for easily replicable measuring points, although these aren't the most accurate cross car comparison measuring points. So if you install this kit and get a slightly different number, don't freak out. The front measured 27 and an eighth inches and the rear measured 26 and three quarter inches. Let's get started with installing this lift and we're gonna start with the front as these will be the most time consuming. Let's first remove this cover that covers the top of the strut tower. You just remove the little spring clip and then lift the cover up and out of place. Next, remove the axle bolt using a 22 millimeter triple square socket. Next, remove the top end link from the strut. Moving underneath the control arm, remove the three nuts that hold it in place. Remove the pinch bolt and nut that holds the hub onto the strut. I'm using both a socket on one side and a wrench on the other. Now using a strut spreader tool or a quarter inch adapter socket, open up and loosen the knuckle that holds onto the bottom of the strut. Now here's where some experimentation comes into play. You're gonna wanna support the hub assembly with a jack underneath and rock it back and forth until you can get it to come down. You are going to need to move and adjust where the strut spreader tool is placed so that way it will come all the way down for you. Head back up top to the top of the strut and remove the three bolts that hold it into place. This is where it's helpful to have two sets of hands so you can have someone down below supporting the strut as you loosen it and remove it from the vehicle. Now it comes time to assemble your B2B Fab lift kit right on top of your strut. And don't worry, you can't misalign this. Uh, the easiest way to know what direction to go is to have the B2B Fab logo facing you and aligned properly, but the bolt spacing won't allow you to screw this up. So get the bottom plate installed and get it torqued up and then go ahead and place your top plate as well. And then go ahead and follow the same procedure and torque that to the spec provided by B2B Fab. All right, now your strut is ready to go back into the vehicle. Go ahead and get it lined up properly with the holes up top. Once you have it properly aligned, go ahead and use the bolts provided with the lift kit and get those installed from the top, fitting them loosely until final torque. So here's where some of the other videos online, specifically the one from New German Performance in collaboration with B2B Fab, left a lot to be desired. They didn't really go into detail on 
how to get everything back together and really show you how to have it installed. So what you're seeing us do here is we have the axle suspended from the strut right now so that way none of the grease out of the boot is leaking out and keeping it up and away and just trying to figure out how to make sure we can get this installed on the strut properly and get the axle in place at the same time. So the key here was to get the hub far and down enough away from the new bottom of the strut again because it's uh, definitely longer than it was before and then using a jack to help lift that hub into place and getting it just perfectly aligned to go back up onto the strut we use a little bit of lubricant to help with that and obviously don't forget to also use your strut spreader tool to help get everything back in place and the key here for us was the order that this all went back together in and what we used although i can't say this is 100 percent correct is to put the hub assembly back onto the strut first then place the axle in the proper spot and then finally get the hub assembly with axle installed back onto the control arm full transparency we had a hell of a time getting this back together uh, the key for us was that the axle wasn't completely seated back within the hub uh, so the control arm bolts weren't lining up but I found by rotating the rotor a little bit to help it get seated uh, ended up being the trick for us are you kidding me? are you kidding me? <laughs> like, what the heck? <laughs> Now that everything is back in the right spot, now we can go ahead and essentially reverse order and go ahead and tighten up all the bolts and nuts that were removed. And then like any job, key step is to go back and make sure everything is torqued to spec. I'll do my best to list all the torques in the description below. Alright, now that the fronts are done, let's move on back to the rear. All right, start by removing the shock bolt as well as the hub bolt. I believe both of these use an 18 millimeter socket. Now we haven't showed it here yet, but I would suggest also removing the end link bolt, which is the bolt all the way to the left or that third one. Right from the get go, uh, it just makes the project that much easier. And these will generally need to be torqued when you're at load, but since you'll be lifted after this, Getting under the car to reinstall these is actually really, really easy since you're an inch and a half higher than you were previously and you won't even need to lift the car or put it up on ramps. Alright, now that you have both those nuts removed, get a jack placed underneath that and slightly lift it until they each come out evenly or easily. Uh, pull those out and make sure the jack is supporting it and then slowly lower it down. Now, here's where I went back and uninstalled the end link bolt. Once you have that all disassembled, you can go ahead and remove the spring. One thing that you need to do is remove the spring cup and the retainer clip that holds it in place. I found that going underneath with a screwdriver and slowly pushing back on the little clips that hold it in place is the easiest way to get that out. Now take the spring cup or the little rubber pad and go ahead and install that on the B2B fab spacer. Make sure you have that aligned properly. There is a little rubber knob that's on the bottom of that spring cup and that should go in the hole that's on the B2B fab spacer. Spring out of the vehicle, I went ahead and reinstalled it onto the spring cup and making sure that the end of the spring was touching the little tab on that rubber pad, which you'll see. And then I went ahead and reinstalled it in the control arm. Using your jack, making sure everything's in place and aligned, go ahead and raise up that control arm and reinstall the bolts that hold the hub and the shock in place. This may take a little persuading, but you'll get it and it's not too difficult. One quick note as you're doing this is the longer bolt goes on the shock and the shorter bolt goes on the hub. Once you get those bolts back in place, go ahead and put the nuts on and tighten them up. And then go ahead and torque those both to the proper spec. While we had the wheels off, we also installed a set of B2B fab spacers that Jeff ordered. And they really helped the wheels fit the car a little better now that he had a little extra clearance in each of those wheel wells. Here we're putting the final torque on all the lug bolts. And now you're going to see me go under the rear of the car to reinstall both of those end links and reinstall the end link bolts and torque those up properly. And that was really easy to do while the car was on the ground. Mm -hmm. 
All right, everything's back together now, and we just took the car for a little spin to get everything settled. Now let's take a look at what the new measurements are. The front now measures 28 and an eighth inch, so an overall increase of about one inch. And the rear now measures at 28 and a quarter inches, or an overall increase of 1.5 inches. So after the install, Jeff seemed pretty stoked about the way it looked and the way it drove. So let's hear what he had to say quickly after driving it around a little bit, and then I'll give you a full debrief on how this install went. So what do you think about all this? Truly, I love it. I'm so excited to be off-roading soon and we're gonna be tent our rooftop tenting as well. It's super cool. Yeah, it looks great. Coming next. It looks great. I mean, everything you, fit everything fit perfect. It did. Really yeah. good. B2B fab <laughs> did a great job. So. Yeah, love it. All right, let's review the install and talk about maybe some things you should know. And first we're gonna talk about the parts themselves. The lift kit from B2B Fab from a fit and quality standpoint was great. The machine parts themselves were beautiful to look at and really well crafted. They fit the car perfectly and fit together really well. The only thing that I wish this kit provided was a little bit of clarity on how to align the rear spacers. And maybe this isn't a huge deal as they'll self align, but I know when installing springs or rear springs on a Golf, this can be really crucial to make sure you don't get any weird noises coming from the rear and have the springs touching. Now, let's talk about the install difficulty. I would rate this as about a six or a 6.5 out of 10 on the difficulty scale. Overall, the install took us about a solid six hours to get it all apart and back together. Since I've done this a bunch before on other VW suspensions, the work was pretty straightforward, but I'll be honest, for a novice, it would definitely feel pretty intimidating. You're removing axles from the hub, which can seem pretty major, and there was a lot of experimentation until everything fit just right. The hub really had to swing far and away once the lift kit was installed due to the extra height that that lift created. So you had to work with it a lot to get it in the right spot. And if you're not experienced in this area, I might suggest that this is an install that you might take to a shop. Uh, the parts aren't that expensive in the first place. So paying a little extra to get it done professionally by a shop might be a good choice for you unless you want to uh, experiment and have fun working on your car. Cause that's why I do it. Overall, the outcome was pretty solid. The car drove and rode in a pretty similar manner to its pre-lifted state, despite having a higher center of gravity. And if Jeff actually gets out there and does some off-roading or some overlanding, he's gonna be very happy he installed this kit. I can't wait to see what it looks like once Jeff puts some you know, really meaty and spaced out wheels and tires on this bad boy. That wraps up this video. Thank you for watching, and if you like the content and it's helpful to you, don't forget to give it a like. That's how I know that you like the content I'm putting out and that it's worth your while. And if you want more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.